are all memories usable for acting. Our guest today played Meryl Streep's lover in Woody Allen's blockbuster, Manhattan. Not only is she a brilliant actress, she is a world-class acting teacher and directed the Uta Hagen DVD. Stay tuned as our guest is ballsy and full of fun. Happy Sunday, peeps. You're watching The Actors Process. I am your host and acting junkie, Claire Elizabeth D. And I am so excited to introduce to you our guest today, the fabulous Karen Ludwig. Thank you, Claire, for that lovely, fabulous introduction. Melbourne is so blessed to have you on our shores. Well, thank you. I'm absolutely loving doing your scene study class at Howard Fine Studios. I'm so glad. And you are just a wealth of knowledge, and I'm so excited to have you here in this seat to share with our viewers today. Great. So who inspired your work, Karen? Uta Hagen. Uta Hagen. Uta Hagen inspired my work. There it is, the DVD that I co-produced and directed. Um, Uta was my first real acting teacher. The reason I loved her was because she loved acting. And she spent a lot of her life figuring out what stopped her as an actor on stage and how could she help others. She was on stage a lot on Broadway. And when she had a problem with acting, she would think about what was it that was stopping her from whatever, mm -hmm. and then she would construct an exercise how to overcome that. Ah. I mean, she just loved it. She was happiest when she was acting. She was fascinated by it. She was ever curious about it. She, in, in class, you, she was one of you. She wasn't up there somewhere. She wasn't a guru. She didn't put herself up on a pedestal. She never did. She used to sit there and smoke galois one after another. In fact, everybody smoked in those days. It was a haze of smoke in the classroom. So in New York, you teach a class word of mouth, the creation of the solo show. Is that correct? There's word of mouth. There's uh, in your own words. There's many different titles for it. But essentially what it is is I encourage actors to do their own work. Mm -hmm. Not to wait around for a call from the agent or exactly. the manager. Not to, and to, what stories can you tell? Everyone has stories to tell. Some are great storytellers, some are not. An event that happened in your life. I mean, there's so many different uh, possibilities. Anna DeVere Smith has one, I mean, one wonderful one-person shows. Uh, Eric Bogosian, uh, Whoopi Goldberg started with a one-person show on, on Broadway where she did several different characters. Um... So my belief is to be proactive, uh, write every day, uh, figure out what it is you want to say, mm. uh, and then tape record it, listen to it, get a director, have people that will listen to it, edit, and get yourself a theater. I mean, it's also cost effective. It's e economic. You don't have to rent a theater for a thousand million dollars on Broadway or have a huge set. Uh, it's affordable, but it's also a great way to find out what you're like on stage alone. And just a great way to learn about yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like there's nothing more vulnerable than you standing it's, on the show, on the stage alone. Absolutely. Yeah. And telling your story. Yeah, yeah. Whatever story that could be. Yeah. You play a, an, a bio, biographical character, someone who's lived. I have a friend, Larry Luckenbill, who uh, portrays different presidents of the United States. Uh, that are dead. <laughs> That's the other thing. It's good if you portray somebody who's died because they can't sue you. <laughs> I just saw Bette Midler on Broadway. She did a fabulous one-woman show about a very famous agent. Oh, she was fabulous. Very, very, very well-known agent to a lot of movie stars. It was just Bette Midler on stage in a Beverly Hills mansion on a big white couch. She had a joint in one hand and a cigarette in the other and a cocktail on the uh, you know, table. And she sat and just talked to the audience about all these stars that she knew and that she represented. But it, it was fabulous. So I thought we could also talk about monologues today because in class I've been yeah. working on a monologue with you. Dance 10 looks three, that's yes, what you did. It is. Can't get it out of my mind, Claire. You were very good. Thank you. Uh, but what I think you've just, you've given me so many tools and I was hoping we could share some of them mm -hmm. with our viewers today. Mm -hmm. For example, I always find it so tricky when you're in an audition and they just say, hey, you've got a monologue and then just straight away. Sometimes they don't even say, hey. 
sometimes. They just say action. <laughs> you. And how to actually start. And you've got a really good tip for actors on actually how to start a monologue. Right. The hardest part about monologues is it's just you. Now, let me just say something about monologues because Uta's face is facing me. And she always said this. A monologue really is mono meaning one. One person talking to oneself. It's written that way. Shakespeare, they talk to the audience. or it's a, But one person talking to oneself is a real monologue. Most of the monologues that the students do are really dialogues mm. lifted from plays, meaning you're talking to another person. So if you're doing a monologue that's really a dialogue, you have to know who you're talking to. And let's say if you're an agent and I'm going in for an audition, I'm not going to look at you because mm. you may yawn <laughs> <laughs> or something else. So I may look above your head or to the side of you, but I have to know who it is I'm talking to. And let's say, and I have to picture that person, and I, what I say to the students is, what question could they have asked you, and you're going to make this up, mm. that allows you to start the monologue, meaning so that your monologue is a response to something that you're answering instead of you starting from ground zero. Suddenly, ah, I, I don't know why I'm talking because no one asked me anything because there's nobody there. So let's say my, my first um, line in the monologue is, I remember when my mother died. Let's say that's the first. Well, instead of just starting with, I remember when my mother died. There's no reason for me to speak. I will make up a line that somebody has said very important to me, like maybe a shrink. Not that I would know about that. <laughs> um, who might have said to me, what was the saddest time of your life? And I would say this. I would like repeat it. I would say, what's the saddest time in my life? I remember when my mother died. Mm -hmm. And I was 25, and, and I'm into it. Yeah, it's a hook line. Yeah. I'm, it's a hook line. That's right. Because the, the, the hardest thing in acting is to find the appetite to say the words they wrote. You have to get the appetite up. And you talk about with the appetite, yes. personalizing a monologue. And yep. in class, we've been using memory and speaking out memory. And I just thought I'd like you to talk more about using memory. Mm -hmm. Are all memories usable? No. Can no. we discuss this? <laughs> I'm going to just say an anecdote about Uta. Uta Hagen's mother died when she was 19 years old. And she said to us in class many times, I've never used my mother in any scene, any play I've ever been in. Why? Because she never talked about it. So in order to test a memory that you want to use for acting, right, you have to test it in some way. If you haven't talked about a sorrowful memory, a traumatic memory, if you haven't given voice to it, it may not be usable for acting. Mm. You don't want to go there because you haven't digested it. And, you know, Sigmund Freud, you don't know Sigmund Freud, he's dead now. <laughs> Wait, I Sigmund respect Freud, his work. <laughs> the, great, the great analyst. He became a star because one of his patients used to come used to be wheeled in every day for analysis on a couch, and she was paralyzed from her waist down. She'd be wheeled in, they'd put her on the couch, she'd lie there and talk about her life, she'd get up after 50 minutes, put her in the wheelchair and wheel her off. One day, gets on the couch, and she hits upon a memory, a traumatic memory, which she gives voice to for the first time, and she started sobbing and wailing, and when they got her off the couch, she didn't need to be in the wheelchair, she got up and walked out. Wow. On her own power. So he became a star, and it was called the talking cure. So talking out your memory starts to heal the instrument. It, 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 it allows you to digest it. You know, so we have sometimes dramatic memories we don't ever give voice to. They're just in there silently, and they can cut you off. I mean, an actor has to be willing to and have the ability to open oneself up, to be vulnerable, to be able to use oneself. You, you, I mean, that's what you have in your life. I mean, a, you know, a musician has their instrument, a painter has a paintbrush, but an actor has this, memories, heart, spirit, body. You're calling on your own life. So let's say you want to use a memory of, let's say, your sister's death, something that's really happened to you, and you're not sure if you can use it. So you call a friend, tell him to sit in a coffee shop with you, preferably not an actor, say, be quiet, I want to talk about this moment when my mother died, and you talk it through out loud. You remember everything about it, the smells, the voices, the sounds, the feel, everything. You talk it out. Now, if you start to choke up and you can't talk anymore, you can't use it for acting. Mm. If you can continue talking and cry and sob or whatever, but if you can continue talking, mm. it's usable. It's usable for acting, so you can test it that way. 
everyone on social media loves quotes. What's your favorite quote? My favorite quote, Claire, is this. It's from an acting teacher by the name of Stella Adler. Mm -hmm. And it's probably a little bit of a misquote, but you know how that is. And she said, stop worrying about who you are. Long has this tormented you. Rather, think about what it is you love to do and then do it like Hercules. Today's viewer question comes from Sam Cornell from Melbourne, Australia. And she asks, Karen, when reading a script for the first time, what is your process? Read the script out loud with your scene partner, maybe. Mm -hmm. Out loud for information only. Don't tilt it any way. Don't start speaking it in a certain way. Don't emotionalize anything. Just read it like you're a detective. Mm. For information only. That's the first thing. And then put the script down with your scene partner, maybe, and do the scene. Just get up on your feet and do it. And see and how then, much you remember. And see how much you remember. Because the things that you didn't remember, you probably don't remember because they didn't make any sense to you or they didn't... Yeah, they didn't, they didn't mean anything. personally. Exactly. So you'd get up and just do the scene. And in that, by that pr process, as you say, um, it's like when your kid's playing house. That's another thing I try mm. to tell my students. Remember how it was when you were children, how you played house with one another. You build your set, you know, and just, okay, I'm going to be the mommy. No, I'm going to be the mommy. No, I'm going to be the mommy. And this is, this is our store. And this is, and you start building it. And then when the children believe in it, that they will both agree, then they can play like mad. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's the same thing. You have to really, anyway, so you do that. You, you get up and you build your, your place so you believe in it. And then you'd go as far as you can. And then when you run out of gas, you sit back down again and you read the words again for information only. And this time you begin to notice, oh, I forgot that. Oh, you and I are married. Oh, we forgot that. Oh, mm. I have to go get a beer. Oh, right? Do it again. Put the script down. Get up on your feet and do it again. And I ask my students to do this for a first rehearsal about six or seven times. And after that process or process, <laughs> you, you have a sense of what's going on physically. Mm, because not as, mentally. as Uda used to say, if your body believes in the situation, you'll believe in it. If the body doesn't believe in it, just like kids, you don't believe in it. So Karen, yes, what's Claire. your daily habit? Flossing. <laughs> what habit do you think actors should get into every day or every second day, every week to evolve their craft? Flossing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, have curiosity. Uh, uh, go out, re talk to people. Uh, uh, you know, read. Uh, keep yourself in good shape. Don't drink like I did. And, uh, because, I mean, when I say that I drink, <laughs> what I mean is um, we used to do th shows and then we go out and get drunk. That was just the way it was. And I learned that um, if you do too much drinking and things like that, this <laughs> will not work as well <laughs> as it should. And that's what you've got. Keep this, this clean, if you know what I mean. If you want a long career. Well, I mean, keep it in good shape so that you can smell things and get excited about things and cry and laugh and enjoy things. But that, yeah. I think that that, if... I would probably have stopped drinking early. <laughs> Thank you so much You're for welcome. joining us today at the Actors Process. Karen, if actors want to learn more about you, they could go Google on to you my website. And, yeah, so it's karenludwig.com. So where are you teaching in New York at the moment? I'm teaching at the New School for Drama, mm -hmm. which is an MFA program, three-year program, and now they've just taken on BAs, Bachelor of Arts, and I'm teaching at the HB Studio Uta Hagen's studio, uh, and I'm going to be interviewing people at the new school. They're now paying me to do that. Well, when I come to New York, yes. you can interview me. I shall. I'm looking forward to that. I am too. Thank you so much for You're joining welcome. us, Karen. Thanks. So, should you use memories for your acting? We want to hear your opinion. Check out this week's blog and leave us your feedback. A huge thank you to our viewers out there. And a big shout out to our amazing crew. 
check out theactorsprocess.tv and find out how you can have your work seen by becoming our viewer of the month. So much is possible with this show with your support. So please like us on Facebook, follow our tweets, and please share this episode with your friends. Remember to floss, and I'll see you next Sunday on The Actors Process.